Soon after, we heard about the outbreak in Wuhan. We heard about the vet market too. COVID-19 was supposed to be a virus, jumping from bats to another animals, most likely a pangolin, which came into contact with a human at the market who got infected by it and we all know the rest. Today we are going to talk about COVID-19 and some conspiracy theory that is related to Wuhan. Welcome to HHR Podcast. Chinese researchers published about the possibility of a coronavirus jumping from bears to people in 2007 because the last half dozen major outbreaks started in a similar fashion. That's in China have dozens of different coronaviruses and the conditions in their markets are basically asking for trouble. But it was never based on direct evidence, only circumstantial. Hence, why it's called the spillover theory. But days after, major news outlets were speaking about this as indisputable fact. It was also revealed that the Wuhan Institute of Biology is not physically far from that particular market and is China's only level for laboratory, meaning they are the ones holding and researching the most dangerous pathogens in the world. As soon as the world learned about this, conspiracy theorists trying to defy the already dogmatic mainstream narrative connected the dots and started to sing their own gospel, which is that the virus was engineered by the Chinese and released on purpose. And all this got washed over by political tensions between the US and China. How Trump was adamant about calling the virus the Chinese virus and so on. It seemed like everyone was pushing their own narrative which is the perfect example of the boy who cried wolf. Science is as clear as it can be about one thing. In a letter called The Proximal Origin of SARS-CoV-2 which was published by the top five biologists of the world. They state that their analysis clearly shows that SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or purposefully manipulated virus. They agreed that the virus was not a deliberate weaponization of a previously known virus and that it had no obvious signs of lab manipulation. This clearly means that the virus according to scientific consensus at the time is not a Chinese-made chimera that they unleashed on the world to achieve global supremacy. And it also likely that it wasn't a coronavirus sample simply escaping the level for laboratory which is supposed to have the highest standards of biosafety. In the light of recent information, it's true we can throw that one out. But there is another theory comes, that is lab leak theory. This is specific Wuhan lab has the largest amount of coronavirus samples in the world, namely 22,000 samples and virus sequences, including 15,000 from bats. The researchers collected this in order to experiment with something called gain-of-function research. This is a controversial idea in the scientific community. It basically means that they took these viruses that rarely crossed from bears to humans and they engineered them to be more deadly and infectious to humans. Yeah, so why on earth would anyone do this? As the argument goes this way, scientists can be ahead of the curve and if they know which viruses are only a few amino acids tweaks shy of disaster, they can learn how to stop them when they cause an outbreak. But the need for this kind of research is hotly debated because many of them are way too risky in case one of these pathogens would escape a lab. Before anyone goes wild with this, this was never a secret. The need for gain of functional research is debated but it's out in the open in the name of pandemic prevention. But it is our first red flag in the search for the origin of this virus. We have a laboratory with the largest top pile of coronavirus samples in the world and researchers are dedicated to making them more infectious to humans. 
all this right at the epic center of our current pandemic so what about the fact we are talking about a level for laboratory that's supposed to have the highest international standards and parameters on conducting these researches especially to prevent a lab leak we have to keep in mind that this is still circumstantial evidence and yes it is very suspicious that the wuhan lab was studying coronavirus right at the epic center of all of this but at the same time scientists warned that nine times out of ten when there is a new outbreak you will find a lab that will be working on these kinds of virus already or nearby simply because biology labs tend to specialize in viruses around them now while this is true for why the wuhan lab specializes in something that's common in china in sort of opens the door to a different question if the spill of a theory is true why did the outbreak start in wuhan after all the coronavirus samples in the wuhan lab all came from the southern subtropical provinces where search originated to well it turns out in 2018 american diplomats have alerted washington that a wuhan lab was not set up properly for a safe operation unfortunately they got ignored and when tensions rode within the us and china in 2018 these diplomats lost access to the lab that's the second red flag let's go deeper into the rabbit hole in september 2019 the database of one labs coronavirus samples was taken offline apparently due to cyber attacks then according to previously undisclosed us intelligence report in november of the same year three researchers of the lab got hospitalized with symptoms similar to this caused by covid-19 Virus hunters were completely surprised to see a coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, central China, where chances of coronavirus jumping from animals to humans are said to be unlikely. So here's the thing, China or Bill Gates creating a virus to usher a pandemic in order to take over the world is still a ludicrous and dangerous conspiracy theory. that should be stoned out while historical patterns and early evidence from the wuhan market still points in the direction that this is a result of china's world life threat new information shows that the lab leak hypothesis is something that needs to be investigated unfortunately people usually want clear cut answers and they want them as soon as possible and this lab leak hypothesis damaged the reputation of not just dr fauci and alike but the scientific community as well the media were simply wrong to boil down the spill of a hypothesis to being an undisputable fact in the early days of the pandemic and the conspiracy theorists have nothing to celebrate if you throw 100 crazy ideas out there one of them turns out to be not that crazy that's not a good success rate moreover the other side cannot do the same science is careful and soft spoken it doesn't sing anyone's gospel and it is not afraid to change in the light of new evidence but when everyone is ailing and nobody has the patient to go beyond the easy answer science can seem unsure and hesitant scientists are the only ones who can act in a truly accountable way here because they very well know that the stakes are high if you don't get to the bottom of the what happened in wuhan we cannot stop it from happening again and people on both sides who want to jump on connecting the dots too early just add to the shroud of fog that hides the truth in case of the origins of covid-19 as thrilling as the lab leak theory sounds the only certainty is that we don't have any evidence yet so our responsibility is to demand the truth and not create one for ourselves thank you for listening to us till now we'll be back in next episode till then stay healthy and stay safe wear mask for you and everyone goodbye